as I scribble in these tomes and read through my predecessors, I cannot help but wonder if it's better to be feared than loved. My vassals clearly did not love me, hence the rebellion, but neither did they fear me. They wouldn't have rebelled. It was an easy decision to end their miserable lives. Forgiveness was in how quick I ended them. I have since moved on with an immense amount of dread, hopefully holding anyone else from making poor decisions. Perhaps I can turn to finally running my empire. The Byzantines are weak. I have bested them once, and with my allies behind me, I shall best them again and again and again until Sicily is mine and the Mediterranean has been secured. Is it better to be loved or feared? Fear works for now, and perhaps will give me the wiggle room to develop love. Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 with our Emperor of Aragon campaign. You guys know what you can do to support the channel. You can, of course, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on bell notifications, and most importantly for me, personally, leave your comments in the comment section. I am very, very eager to see what today's episode has. I don't know since I record these at the beginning. But I think with everything going on, the Mediterranean is not that far away. And theoretically, theoretically, it's only 10 in-game years away. But who knows what can happen? Any number of things can. So I'm excited to get back into it. I hope you are too. Roleplay face on with Imper Guffrey of Aragon. With the purging of the Liberty War vassals, I have a bit of breathing room, finally. Finally, finally. And I realize that I have not really taken care of my family. In Fonte Gufri of Aragon, you, sir, 15 years old, quite the man, if I say so myself, prowess of 15, learning of 12, diplomacy of 10, You've got quite a solid head upon your shoulders. But you're about to become a man, and I need you to learn some duties. It appears the only thing I can give to him is the county of Navarra. Yeah, that's on the border. I think that would do marvelous things. He is now officially my vassal as my son, but he's also unmarried. And I think considering the alliances we have, it wouldn't be a bad idea to marry for traits. And perhaps be able to grab something, but immediately I'm drawn to Apollonia de Barcelona, who is, of course, related to us in a very, very, very distant manner but albeit still related. Do I risk the robust physical trait or do we browse some more? Well, instead, I decided to focus on Inez Diguez Garcia. She is quite intelligent, which means the chance of us having children are very high thanks to the handsome trait, but between handsome and intelligent we should be able to uh, be a minor alliance but we should be able to bear children that have both especially considering our family legacies i think that would be worthwhile now i do have other family members of course infante arnaud miro of aragon is my second son and well there's not really much that I could give him. Actually, I could give him quite a bit, but it would leave me without lands. And I don't think I want to worry about that. If I did, it would be the county of Syracusa, but I still don't feel like that's worthy of his control yet. Now, we could, under the same agreements, try and find someone to betroth for him. And while traits do matter, I also think that things could go a little bit our way, such as Dorotesia Demagojevic. Ooh, what a name and a half. Now, 
only thing that would be inherited would be a quick physical trait, which is still good. But the thing is also, he receives a little bit of prestige. Dor Dorotesia does as well. And then we gain from Upper Bosnia a rather large alliance. We will go ahead and send that out as well. Infante Inigwin, that's right, named her after my mother. She's growing up, nine years old. I don't think she's quite suited for the intrigue. Diplomacy seems to be her focus. And he, she is, of course, married to Infanta, or at least betrothed to Infanta Hermexeludu Savariquez of Lyon. We fashioned that alliance a while back. Sonifred of Aragon is also married to, or betrothed, rather, to Princess Valence of West Francia. And let's move him to stewardship instead. And then Infante Wame of Aragon. You have no one yet, and we could educate you. You know what? We'll go ahead and have Patriarch Bernard. Absolutely, I think that would work. He's a little bit too young, and we haven't decided, but based on his whole, on his stewardship, let's focus you towards stewardship as well. And then in Fonte Blanca, you are too young to know much, but we are going to push you towards diplomacy. And I do believe I could educate myself if I'm not mistaken and if not someone with a little more pizzazz like my court physician fantastic also don't know why my bishop is just in all of those uh, in that little garb now we have a few things to consider for one we have three years left until we can wage war against the Byzantines they are slowly recovering but they will indeed be able to craft a rather large force Fortunately, we have strong allies at our side. But another thing, a courtier, a courtier. Let me know that the kingdom of Aquitaine, just ever so slightly, might be willing to vassalize under the correct conditions. Currently, we are trying to sway Count Dorotheos to prevent him from doing any schemes, which is something we could still certainly hold on to. But I'm kind of thinking we need to think about King Bernard of Aquitaine and whether or not we could try and vassalize him. Kingdom of Aquitaine, completely underneath our reign, would indeed be amazing. Not quite there yet. Lots of things that we can do, though. I can build on my empire, which is something that sorely, sorely needs some help. Pastoral lands, Syracusa, you know what? Farms, absolutely. We need pastoral lands in Erun. Pastoral lands again. Nothing else can be built here, which is fine. We could upgrade to a tier two uh, in the near future, but that's not going to happen. In Barcelona and in Girona, we are about as well off as we can be. So having all of these is quite great. We could go to hunting grounds too if that would be worth it. Defender advantage in Cagliari, I think would be absolutely crucial. So we will go ahead and push that there. Nothing else can be done at the moment. I don't think it would be worthwhile to invest in a Bailey just yet, but we'll have to see. Overall, I'm pretty, pretty impressed with everything that's going on. Very excited for the future. We are making a lot of money, prestige, piety, and even renown. Not in a bad place, and I'm willing to twiddle my thumbs just for a little while in order to gain what I need for the further reaching future. Betrothal position. My, your son and heir will be betrothed to my daughter. Fantastic. Gladly accept as well. Your son, Arnaud Miro, will be betrothed to my daughter, Dorotesia, and we gained a rather intense alliance as well. We now have quite the setup here. Should we have to go to war again. You can see that I have 20,000 soldiers at my side. It would absolutely be amazing if we could push it sooner, but perhaps we can have that further claimed in some way, shape, or form. Regardless, alliances have been secured and I am quite the happy emperor. Oh, sweet wife, you were pregnant not too long ago. It seems like yesterday. And now you've given birth to yet another little son. 
We got the perfect name. It's a solid Christian name. Bar Ptolemaeus. May you grow to be strong and wise, my son. It seems that God indeed favors those who are patient. We have a new Byzantine emperor, Basilius Sebastianos of the Byzantine Empire. He is a great man without a doubt, but I have worlds to need <laughs> that need conquered. You have a very, very meager army. You have no allies, and while you certainly could bring in new allies as you make them, I also am able to hold sway over such things. Declaring war now would indeed be where we need to go with this. Mayor Gardingus of Gargente, let's lay siege to Messina. And what will be a first attempt. He has brought on more soldiers. They are most likely mercenaries. Some cataphracts are indeed not something that I was hoping to see. Hopefully we can hold them off though. If we need to, we can bring in reinforcements. I would just prefer not to take that prestige hit if at all possible. And while our campaign, Guffrey and Fonte Guffrey, my son comes of age with an excellent grasp of all manners of etiquette, understanding of all kinds of entertainment. He is a charismatic negotiator, meaning that our son and heir will have quite the diplomacy boost. And they can finally marry as well. Fantastic. Our siege continues while the enemy, the hoplites of Lower Galatia, continue to siege Syracusa. Although I don't think they'll quite be able to reach it and get it sieged down in time. Or our lads do, but we will have to see. With Messina siege down, taking on Syracusa is going to be the best way continue. I don't want to take on the first army of Catania, considering they're not involved in this war. I'm heading down. Oh, looks like they're reinforcing. Oh, nope. They're just simply getting out of there. Perfect. Seems they have captured Syracusa, which is very unfortunate. We will meet them in the barony of Lintini, hopefully for a very quick and simple battle. The battle of Lintini is a very quick and easy win for us. Very quick and easy. We only lost 683 men to their 1400. Our levies did quite a little bit of work. The light horsemen and our knights doing quite the other bit. And in fact, their knights, oof, they did quite a bit though themselves. The point is that we won and the retreat phase is where they really got hit nastily and we don't appear to have the best prowess army something we'll have to remedy in the future they are retreating though Syracusa will quickly be mine and now we need to honor our alliance and join the war for the duchy of Zahunji totally that's fine with me we will be able to work on that as soon as we are done but also one thing that I forgot to do that I simply forgot was at hand we are Catalan, but it's not something I want to remain. Once we are done being at war, we will convert to the Swaby culture because it is the Swabians who have the reduced mercenary costs. So ever should we need them, we would be able to get 50% off. Something that I need to remember again once we've settled for peace. It appears that Duke Christopher of Aragon, my vassal, comes to pay homage and is a show of loyalty. He kneels in deference as attendants bring forth his gifts. The oath is taken. The scribes record his pledges. As Duke Christopher stands, he stumbles. The court gasps in unison as he falls, ending sprawled at my feet, cheeks flushed with embarrassment. Oh no, we don't need to worry about that. Your oaths are all that matter to me. We gain grandeur, prestige, and money, as well as renown. I don't want to embarrass him anymore. And he has already been embarrassed. We have taken Syracusa. It's simply a manner of time before the Byzantine army comes back to us. And, ooh, the cocky emperor, Duke Gavas of Aquitaine. Aptain. I wish I could speak. Uh, no, he won't be there. You called me cocky. I don't think I'm cocky. I think I am completely and totally reasonable. Oh, very nice. 
all titles or seize any Catholic rulers. We didn't do anything, but that's not too shabby of a deal overall. We'll take care of what might just be a roving band of troops. And were I to have the time, I think I could go down to the Barony of Malta, but I'm not quite sure where the Byzantine army is, and I would hate to go ahead and move on too quickly. But I guess we'll go ahead and do it. And my wife was pregnant almost immediately again. Pierre, I like it. Yet another son. We have quite the extensive family that we haven't seen in really two generations. I'm kind of excited. At the same time, absolutely terrified of what it means to have so many children. I gained a new stewardship perk as well. And I think one of the things that would work is going down large levies, which increases our levy contribution. And if we go down to toe the line, they're less likely to join independent factions, which I think would greatly help us. It's possible that... Uh, yeah, all we have are orthodox populists and peasant rabble. No one else can join. And none of those are going to be strong enough to worry. So I think we are okay. Having taken Malta, we can move along as efficiently as possible. And I see the reason why he may not be so engaged. He's fighting another war. One that honestly may be more important to him than our is to us. Now, I'd hate to take over those guys, so we shan't. Instead, we'll go towards the Barony of Camarda and see if we can't push our things a little further. We're going to go ahead and work on Syracusa, which will take a significant period of time, as it was ransacked. And the control there will certainly not go well nor quick. Camarda has been taken, and it appears I'm going to have to go all the way to the Greek mainland, something we've never had to worry about before. Oh, what spoils lie in Constantinople? 4,000 troops as a garrison. 119 gold in loot. Oh, we could sack the capital, but I don't know what purpose it would serve. Instead, we're going to take Rosano. And we're going to think that the armies over there are over there and not over here. So that we can take advantage of the things that are going on. Now, as the Order of the Knights Hospitaller grow, we need more land. The city of Vecchio. Mayor leases out to the Knights. Absolutely. 513 gold. That works for us. I would definitely say we are swayed well enough. The niece is taken. Oh, no. We have our niece, which is taken prisoner. That's absolutely terrible. Well, well, well. Arno Mir, you know the intricacies of warfare. Oh, we thought he did. He's only developed a basic understanding. He's a tough soldier and he's reckless. They grow up fast. We can marry. And I'm going to bring in my son and force him to be on the battlefield. I think that would make... There we go. Uh, and if these guys die, then so be it. Wouldn't be the first time I've tried to purposefully wreck the soldiers here. To the best of my ability. All is well. There we go. Piece of cake. Enforced demands. So be it. Messina is now... Well, not mine... Count Ilianus of Messina has taken over. And a merchant sent me a sample of seeds. Plants she claims are good for health and mind. Ooh. We could start a private garden. There's a large chance we'll get Seeker of Knowledge for 10 years. Ah, oh, but you learn a lot. You gain Seeker of Knowledge. That is absolutely perfect. Someone's trying to plot to kill my prisoner. Ah, uh, we can kill prisoners. That's okay with me. Now, the, the best part about this is that we have quite a few prisoners of war. Now, some of these aren't super expensive, and that's okay. There are a couple which I have my eye on. One, in fact, Do Chariton. He owes me 100, but he can only pay 53, which is fine by me. We can wait a little bit. Uh, yeah, we're, we already did all that. 
But on top of it, it would allow me to then boost my coffers, to boost my castles up, to boost everything possible. And give me the heads up that I need to essentially survive this place. We'll build hill forts there, absolutely. Uh, let's go with an outpost, I think is going to be the best. I will do a barracks. Syracuse, pastoral lands or a trade port. Trade port is a piece of cake decision. Uh, we'll build an outpost there. I don't believe that anything could be built here. We could build pastoral lands. I think hill farms would almost be better. I'm not going to have them marry because that doesn't make sense. The sensible uh, emperor, I call you an honor alliance and join me in the liber uh, liberty war. Oh, it looks like we've got ourselves a little war here, don't we? Uh, I can raise all here. Yeah, I think this will be pretty crucial. There we go. Yeah, we'll just head over there. You never know what might happen. First army of Segovia doesn't appear to be moving. Oh, there we go. Let's see if we can't catch them in battle. Up on the mountains it is, that's okay. We simply need to catch them and destroy everything we can. There we go. Our knight was slain. Oh no, not Duke Vivianu. Whatever will we do? There we go. One small victory. Let's go down to Quillar. It appears that I have inherited the barony of Velha from Baron Shabal of Velha. Interesting. I need to grant this to someone. What about one of my family members? Like in Fontaine on Nomiru. The Barony of Velha. Perfect. Very nice. We do have rebellions coming. But I don't think they're getting anywhere close to where they need to be, which is fine. I have no worries about that whatsoever. Now the Sultan Ghazi Adal Stark has apparently... Learned our dog Volgar. He's learned? Send my regards. Absolutely. We need to get rolling fast. Laying siege, I wish, would not take so long. Oh, it appears that it's been renegotiated. Never mind. I will be okay. We do have avian abuse. Seize him, Master of the Hunt. Bernard Bellows gesturing at Magistus. My personal guard hesitantly moved forward, unsure of whether to follow the commands. Where's my hand to stop them? Ask Bernard would give him reason. This monster deliberately harmed his falcon during our last hunt. He must be punished severely. Let's go find this miscreant that works for me. We do have an inspiration. So he's considered a master, a book inspiration. We will sponsor that without a doubt. That's easy. Very, very cool. I approve, I approve, I approve. And we need to hold court. So many things to do as king. I regret to inform you the religious situation in my land is out of control. Too many of them persist in the wrong beliefs. Peaceful coexistence is always the best solution. I think that is true. A gaggle of grotty peasants appear before my throne. They are armed with the most vicious flaming arming equipment. One pokes a pitchfork through my favorite throne cushion. This being which rules us as a true demonic incarnate. No real man capable of such violence. A darling concept, spread the word that I'm a demon. I don't know about that. I'm no demon, I'm an emperor, which is much, much worse. Absolutely, there we go. My lord, I propose a cadastral survey of all the counties you own. Oh, that's a lot of money. No, we'll do it. I think that works. All of our businesses are gone. My beneficiary, Clemencia, insists the funds I've supplied her with are not well enough are not enough to create an artifact worthy of my stature. I will definitely fork over 50 gold. That's not a problem. Not a problem at all. The problem we are having. Countess Isabeau has been murdered. My dear Isabeau, 
I might not have loved you, yet I feel you're passing more acutely than I ever thought possible. We lose an alliance, oddly enough. And with no queen, we could certainly try and go to clear war over there. But the point is now that I am, I am not married. And at this point, I'm not sure what I would marry for. Let's just go with Esclamande de Ponti. Barony there is not strong e enough at all. Oh. Forget it. Esclamande de Ponti. I'll lose 400. That's okay. Awesome. Well done, wife. And my wife should be able to. Here we go. Uh, she'll be able with court intrigue or she can manage estates, which I think is what we'll do. My lord. Clemencia smiles. My book, my masterpiece is finished. Detailed drawings of each plant and description of its medical properties. It covers woods, been painted to display a repeating image. Magnificent herbalarium gives us learning, a small health boost, prestige. Very, very impressive. My courtier and best friend, Akfredo. He died. What does it say he died of? Just simple old age. He was age 67. We are at a breaking point, unfortunately. Frozen Greek gives us a moderate penalty. Diplomacy to two. <sighs> a drunkard gives us a tiny penalty. I think we're definitely going to have to do that. I can ask my head of faith for gold. I feel like that would be acceptable. Which would then allow me to go out on a hunt. Something I could do anyways. But before I can, Count Haniscus Odomanza of Galura has invited me to a party. What did I promise last night? I can't remember. Rumors about an oath. He does get a small hook on me. And that's how we salvage that mess. No, we're, we're fine. No, we're, we're good. He recognizes true intellect. I agree. We go home. I am reduced in my stress. And no sooner that than Eneguin comes of age. She is a naive appeaser, so she didn't do too stinking well overall. Which is a little bit frustrating. It's been several months, and in fact, oh, it feels like almost years. With relative peace in the realm and nothing of import to discuss. My truce with the Byzantine Empire has almost faded. All I need is... Malta and I will be good our troops outnumber his it should be an easy war but one final thing that I would like to do is to go on a pilgrimage Jerusalem costs 512 the churches in Vaticano Cologne the site at Jerusalem is where we will go where this journey will lead me, I have no idea. But considering our coffers, it was an easy investment to make for our future. As I prepare, I know I would travel safely under the protection of God. My destination lies far from home, but in service to heaven, even my own realm must wait. Seems I'm not taken well to all of this travel. Perhaps it's the strange lands with unfamiliar air. Perhaps my furs are not warm enough. My cough has been persistent. This is no time to give up, though. Even when on pilgrimage, the priests still hold mass every Sunday. It's held out in the open when no church is nearby. But early this morning, a storm rolled in has not ceased. Undeterred, a zealous priest is standing out in the pouring rain, giving a sermon about perseverance in the face of adversity. Despite this, the size of his audience is rapidly dwindling as discouraged adherents seek refuge from the storm. Considering my illness, I think it's best for us if I don't. I'll simply be in my tent. And yet, Jerusalem, I have come to. No other city in the world has a history quite like Jerusalem. In addition to many other holy sites, the city contains the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, built over the combined places where Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected. Standing outside the Temple Mount, with my hand on the western wall, I find myself reflecting on everything that has happened in the journey to this city of legend. I gain a hefty amount of piety, I gain the trait pilgrimage, Pilgrim, which gives me monthly piety and same faith opinion. And I gain determined pilgrims. 
monthly piety per night plus two percent very nice i have indeed shown dedication to my faith and i don't think it's not a coincidence but suddenly i'm all well everything is hunky dory my journey has been a long one but i finally come home how much remains the same Something has changed in how the priests and bishops treat me. I've undergone a journey of a holy man, and they insist it's changed something about me whether I see it or not. And indeed, my faith journey has allowed enough time to have passed to take on Basilius, who does not appear to be looking well. He has great pox. He is now one-eyed as well. It's best to take advantage of the situation while we can. He's also massively under debt, which always, always works in our favor. We're going to raise all here. We're going to move to Malta. We're going to try and get this war, potentially kick the Byzantine Empire out of Italy, although that seems a little far-fetched. And then amidst the comfort of a friend, there's few things I do more than Sakin's company. It is a nice little break. 72 stress. Very nice. And unbeknownst to me, my son Sunifrin had consumption, but is all right now. Praise be to God. Indeed, I had no idea. I go to lay siege, and it appears people are here before me. This should be an easy battle. I don't know why you are there. This shouldn't matter, but regardless, I've won. It just is a bit of a strange thing to have there anyways. And now the mark of the distinction. My renown of the dynasty grows. Familiarity with the glorious de Barcelona sigil spreads too. My family in them is now common knowledge. Ooh, that's fantastic. Prestige, renown, building construction costs, and court grandeur increase. Ooh, famed. Can't say I'm displeased about that. Assaulting the fort to progress this quickly is well worth the men I've lost. Let's get back to the mainland. Let's recover before we move along and see what the Byzantines are up to. And unfortunately, my counselor, Dorotheos, has died. Chancellor was well liked. This is a no brainer. Duchess Adelaida of Mallorca will go in there to satisfy my powerful vassal without a doubt. We are equally very interestingly filled with women in our council and I can't say that that's a bad thing it's not it's not a bad thing whatsoever uh do I want to bring my allies into war is something yes let's go ahead and do it just to kind of have two fronts King Carloman he will join eventually it appears my royal architect has died who is also my steward Countess Isubia of Messina appears to be the best person. Count Yassard even Aziz of Burjana is something that could work as well. Both of these people appear to... Uh, they may not survive very long, so I'll be okay. We have some older people in our council. It appears they're kind of dropping like flies. Ooh, nothing in this world is certain, especially in times of war. The fourth Aragon de Jure war for the county of Malta has been no different. As this conflict is no longer against Prince Theocrastios, the Basilius Basilios, the Byzantine Empire, no. No, my goal is still the same. We will recruit up, and because of my uh, conversion over to the Suebi, we can uh, somewhat afford some troops. We can hire some knights, Hospitaller. We'll do that for a little bit of piety. Bring those men in. The Grand Master Velus. Oh, wow. Grand Master. Whew. Feel beyond honored. Let's head here. And maybe, just maybe, we have the capabilities to take on Constantinople itself. How glorious would that be? Sheik Zifrin. Medea has uh, unfortunately been caught. A valuable hostage has been had. 
Oh, I see. We were declared on. Holy war for the duchy, indeed. May not work in your favor, considering the odds that are stacked against you, but they're going to throw themselves against me anyways. Fair to say, we're going to go after the Walaya of Medea. And I'm going to move north to try and take Kamarna. Unsure of where my Muslim enemies are. Let's invite King Hermexiludu Savarikes of Castile to the fourth war against the Byzantines. Just for kicks and giggles. I have the capabilities to do so. I think it would be well worth the money spent. Well, this is unexpected. King Carloman wants to duel. I have a prowess of 28. He has a prowess of 1. We'll accept that. King Carloman and I stalk around each other, each weighing for options. He has a fearsome Budinsky battle axe. Well, I grip my own King Guffrey's Warhammer. Fight may only be till first blood, but that doesn't ease my nerves. Better men have died trying to break my guard. My hammer is a better protector than my shield, parrying, countering, and guarding against Carloman's every move. Wherever he moves his axe, my hammer is there, waiting. May God heal the wise knight scum, screams my opponent, whirling his axe furiously at, around, and near me. My form is good with only small errors. My opponent's guard is fierce, and I feel far from victory. I'll show you how I raise my hammer with a confident attack. Well-placed strikes. It doesn't increase my likelihood of success, but it does reduce risk of injury, while Carloman, on the other hand, increases his success, but also a very high chance to his risk of injury. My hammer flows around Carloman like water, each strike chaining fluidly into the next. Series of perfectly timed attacks. Well aware he's utterly outmatched, hurls himself at me bodily, forcing me backwards the desperation of the doomed. My form is good, only small errors. I've yet to open up my opponent's guard at all. I think we're going to throw out a flurry of rapid attacks. I leap into action, launching a fury, fury of rapid thumbs, driving myself hard against Carloman's guard, wearing him down. Carloman hefts his axe in a strangely familiar fashion, then execute a near-perfect powerful cleave that I could swear I've seen before. My form is excellent, little chance yet to open up my guard. Confidence lends competence, as they say, and my strikes prove that. When Carloman simply freezes on the spot, I'm almost stunned myself. But if he's not going to fight, that's not going to stop me. I lunge forward with a crutching thwack. No parry meets me, no dodge evades me, and I have to pull myself back at the last instant to avoid crushing his skull. Instead, I simply rest my hammer against it. Once more, Carloman freezes, but it's clear I've won. I win the single combat, the durability of the Warhammer has decreased. The durability of Barcelona's flexible scale armor has decreased. King Carloman gains the trait wounded. A bit of a weird move from my ally, but one that happened nonetheless. And with an enemy heading towards Tordioli. Nice. I have to take on this holy war as quickly as I can. Hence the reason why... I've enlisted my allies for the war against the Byzantines. Landing in Tortoli, we are able to ooh, land some solid thwacks against Emir Zamida, Ibn Zamida of the Azurid Imrit. And during the Battle of Tortoli, Sunifred, my son, comes of age. Few would be impressed by his understanding the subjects of administration, but he's still a thrifty clerk. And they can indeed marry, which is perfect. I've gained another trait, and I do believe change of loyalty would be the best course of action for us. Winning that victory was rather simple, and I am happy for it. When we assault the fort, we cannot. More troops have landed in Malta. We will gather... On the Walia of Medea, and then we will continue. Whoa. No, we will turn right around. I wasn't aware. I thought they had been kicked off of the island. Turns out they haven't. 
and they've settled at the barony of Bastia. We'll turn our ships around. We'll land and we'll deal with that menace. They're caught yet again. Battle of Bastia indeed stands no chance whatsoever, especially not after those two victories. We will enforce those demands without a doubt. We will head there. We're going to put the Knights Hospitaller into this as well. Ooh, never mind. That's right, they went away. Because they can't technically fight in this war. My troops are embarking, although I do fear that we will lose Malta. Which is a bit unfortunate. It seems that... Oh, the poor Byzantines. They have a new emperor. The goal is still the same. The war rages on... And my counselor, Roderick, finally passed as well. A new spy master it is, and Duke Christopher, the Impaler of Aragon, someone who doesn't really enjoy me in any way, shape, or form. <sighs> He's our best bet, unfortunately. His faith is too strong to try and convert, I understand. Worth the shot. So Malta is still ours. We simply need to land an army. I cannot ask for gold for just under a year, so it looks like Constantinople might be outside of the realm of possibility, which is a rather big disappointment. I don't know, can we, can we possibly take on Constantinople? Or is that a little too eager? I think we're about to find out. In the meantime, though, maybe one of the last times that we hold court. We will sponsor the inspiration there. And we cannot sponsor that inspiration. Holding court. My vassal Countess P uh, Padulisa approaches the throne with a young man in tow. My legion emperor, my acquaintance, Hilderic Braca, seeks the honor of serving in your retinue of knights. Ah, he'll work. Can't complain about that. A haggard-looking peasant now stands in front of me. My lord, I beg for help. A monster. Prowls the mountains of palace, killing cattle and farmers alike. Send your strongest hunters. Save us. My master of the hunt will definitely love to look into this. And we'll see what he finds. The monster has been killed. Fantastic. Very simple. Easily won. Our court grandeur is ranked second in the world. Second only to the Byzantines, of course. That's okay. I'm actually okay with that. We'll upgrade our lavish food. Very nice works for me let's go siege Constantinople as we arrive in Constantinople we can see that the walls seem nearly impenetrable unfortunately it would take four years four years that I don't exactly have as I take attrition I don't think my allies will be able to support me I can't enlist holy order as I'm not going up against a hostile faith and I do need some time before I can request gold it's possible that we can keep this and on getting gold I'll then be able to move some mercenaries into the fold to allow me to push things a little bit quicker this is for the long haul my friends but I believe it's absolutely worth it Bernard Gwillem is wanting me to dedicate my inspiration. Yeah, definitely the Lord. Absolutely the Lord. Why wouldn't it be anything but the Lord? Our siege is going well, and it looks like, good Lord, the conflicts. We will stay here no matter what happens. There is a lot going on here. Byzantines seem to be as much turmoil internally as well as externally. And I do believe I can ask for gold, but he will not accept. He doesn't have the best opinion of me. Perhaps if I can gift an artifact, one I haven't used in a long time, even a fine battle axe might be enough to sway him. Renat, give me a second. 690 gold will work. The inspiration has been realized, my lord told many days and nights 
an opulent statue of Emperor Guffrey. Painted and excellently carved, the Emperor is famous for his enlightened reign over the Empire of Aragon. The maple of the sculpture is excellently worked, giving me prestige, vassal contribution, and a court grandeur bonus. I do appreciate that. We will add it. The court artifacts. Look at that. I appreciate it. It looks fantastic. Although I will admit, I don't think it looks anything like me. But that's okay. Now that we have the funds, it's time to push as hard as we can. Andalusian band, a Kalat Ayub would be useful. But I don't think something that would be worthwhile. Instead, I think the Andalusian band, of Berjana. Hmm. That's quite a lot. This is more. We will hire him. We will get him to go over here. It will take quite a while, five months. But I think it'll be worth it because we're running low on the number of soldiers before a siege no longer progresses. And it's tourney day. The sun is shining and peasants are milling about the tourney. All my knights cheers, Empress Escalamonde announced at the tournament in their honor. For once, I get to simply watch. I too cheer my knights. Every knight gains 20 opinion of me. Can't go wrong there. Not one single bit. My reinforcements have arrived, which has bolstered the number of soldiers. Oh, this seems feasible. And now Infant Guam Gufrias of Aragon. Ah. Oh. Unfortunately, he hasn't learned much in his stewardship days. Nonetheless, he's still my son. He still deserves to be happy to find love. And I think he'll find that in the chiefess Zilinswala Agnesio. The genius trait may help us in the long run. It gives us a very small alliance, which won't really, really matter, but that's okay. It's more for the traits anyways. Very nice. And my allies have come to help me in full swing. This siege is happening. Constantinople will fall. And I will be the one to have broken the walls for the first time in its history. Battle of Constantinople being led by Ionis Hexcavolis. I don't see how he's going to win this, but you can tell it is an act of desperation as the siege draws near. This may be enough to end the war itself. Nope. A stewardship perk likable. Boosts our vassal's opinion of me. We are three months. We are going to assault the fort to end this quicker. Well, their capital has been lost. Hasn't boosted much. We still have the war score. We don't have much in the way of battles, unfortunately. Did he move his capital? It does appear that he did. We will take on Adrianopolis. Move along as fast as we can to see if we can't end this war as best as possible. Constantinople has at least hopefully been sacked a little bit. As my allies move into Asia Minor, I look to take on Adrianopolis. I'm ready to be done with this war. We've seized the artifact, the Tales of Basilius, Basilios. Betrothed can marry Infanta Iniguin, my daughter and the vassal. Excellent. And now, the war is officially over with. Byzantines, you can continue on your merry, merry way. I have a few things to take care of quickly. A couple of court things. Tales of Basilius, Basilios. I would rather put that there instead. And then, Tales of Basilius Basilios. In the throne room, Epicurean Entertainment. Ah, excellent roasted swan, my favorite. Yari of Bearers Merrily, Merrily, excuse me, gorging himself as the servant desperately steadies the serving tray. Oh, my beloved candied figs, bro. I'm just gonna let him be, but goodness gracious. Our grandeur is at 98, but is still second in the world. Something we'll just have to be okay with. But, what do we need 
here. We simply need gold. And securing the Mediterranean will be ours. Ransoming prisoners from the previous war was a piece of cake. And now we can secure the Mediterranean with key islands across the Mediterranean secured and acting as watchtowers of the sea. It's time for us to claim ownership over the waves. House Barcelona gains masters of the Mediterranean. Our monthly prestige increases. Naval speed increases. Coastal advantage is gained and development for 100 years. Dynasty Barcelona gets 350 renown. We unlock the Mediterranean Conquest, allowing you to conquer any county along the shores of the Mediterranean for the duration of the House Modifier. That's 100 years. While you control the Kingdom of Balio Tyrrhenia. I get the Kingdom of Balio Tyrrhenia. Becomes de jure liege of the Duchy of Mallorca, the Duchy of Sardinia, Duchy of Corsica, and the Duchy of Sicily. Mare Nordstrom. With the taking of Mallorca, Sardinia, and Sicily, we have declared ourselves the righteous rulers of the Mediterranean Sea. Envoys have sailed all corners of the earth and notified lesser rulers about our glorious achievement. This sea and everything it touches belongs to us. Balio Tyrrhenia. I love it. It's fantastic. And the kingdom of Aragon has been secured forever. We will do resilient bloodlines which reduces the chance of increasing bad congenital traits. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. These were the goals to end the Iberian struggle and to become the masters of the Mediterranean. Our journey is complete. It feels weird saying that, feels weird to have this thing done with, but it's pretty cool. The Empire of Aragon will no doubt endure. It'd be interesting to see where this empire could have gone, as we now basically have the ability to take over anything that lies along the Mediterranean. Everything is ours to an extent. And I think that's pretty darn cool. Regardless though, we are officially done with this role playing guys thank you so very much for hanging out with me on this journey it's been a long one probably won't be quite as long in the future i do realize these drag on and on perhaps i can have some more concise goals for the future but guys if you enjoyed any part of this be sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel turn on bell notifications and leave your comments i am a little bit more open at the moment to deciding what we are going to do for the next role play. Uh, I am waiting on an update that was supposed to come for the uh, Dark Ages mod, but regardless, or what I noticed is that it's not coming until later on in the year, so I think we will approach that when the uh, Britannian struggle approaches there. But there are several other mods, other places that I can explore, so be sure to let me know what you think in the comment section down below. It's weird to think this is done for, but if you have any critiques, anything I could do in the future, please let me know as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of House Barcelona. It feels weird to come to a close, but at the same time, it's a breath of fresh air. I'll see you in the next one. Iberia, ravaged by the bloody tides of four, kings and sultans, dukes and emirs. Adversity makes for strange bedfellows, my friend. And you must read carefully if you are to decide the fate of Iberia.